lying I wonder what you're thinking Behind those eyes I can see your gears spinning fast People listen to and follow the Beyond the Scope podcast. Listen and follow Beyond the Scope podcast because Beyond the Scope focuses on so many important things outside of medicine that are like once you're in med school, once you're a practicing physician, life outside doesn't stop. So um, very cool to listen to everyone's diverse experiences and interests. It's a great podcast. Go follow it. Yay. <laughs> There's nothing to say, baby. But if you'd be so kind as to listen to my last confession. So this week is um, orientation weeks. Uh, weeks. I say weeks because I've sat through a bunch of orientation uh, meetings and calls today. But that's basically what my first week of 2022 looks like. I hope everyone had a safe and happy holidays, um, Christmas if you celebrate it. I uh, hope everybody had some nice relaxing time with family and friends. But cheers, 2022 is here and uh, that means I, at least by the time of me recording this, will be in rotations uh, tomorrow. So there's, there's a lot of new coming in uh, to the new year. experiences, a lot of new people to meet, and a lot of new changes in the way I study. Um, and it's intimidating because I'm kind of sailing into waters that I have never ever been to before. And our faculty acknowledge that a lot of what we're feeling, a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressures, um, taking this next step is, um, you know, just a natural part of the process. So most of our orientations were like, how do I study? How do I manage my time? How do I stay active and healthy? Um, and less of what to expect on rotations because that varies so much uh, depending on what you're on. So a lot of this week actually has been, at least for me, talking to a lot of friends in the uh, upper classes uh, just picking their brains on like, hey, how did you approach this? What resources did you use? Do you have anything to share? Uh, because like, even as much as any school tries to bring in, you know, test taking experts, um, you know, strategists to advise us, it just isn't the same. Uh, and nobody really understands you um, and what you're going through more so than the men and women beside you uh, going through med school uh, with you. So that's why I've been calling them up, asking like, yo, please help me. <laughs> and I'll tell you the whole skinny on how many days you get off, what the attire is, etc. What's up, man? Good, how are you? Thanks for popping in that call. I'm not like you had a choice. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be fine. I mean, the clerkship like, really has its pros and its cons. <laughs> I was like, now I'm invested. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, I was like, whoa. I was like, divide, pop off, free. Um, he's just he's nuts, but he's step, he's step one heavy. So. Okay. So I must admit that new has a pretty scary connotation to it. Um, new year, new experiences, because um, it brings about a sense of unknown, which is equally exciting and terrifying. But one of the best ways to quench fear or uncertainty is to plan. And so for the past week, under the advisement of a lot of upperclassmen um, who have been 
super, super encouraging to me uh, has been to plan out my year, plan out these um, next couple rotations, but also plan out how in the world am I going to adapt my life to this new chapter. Like one, how in the world am I going to organize studying? So I picked my resources um, that I'm going to stick with, uh, the practice question bank that I wanna work with, which is UWorld, as well as I arranged my Notion templates to um, have all of my scheduling, so how many questions I do per day, how many uh, Anki cards I do per day, as well as a whole spreadsheet um, that Christian actually sent me that uh, tracks like what questions I get wrong and uh, ensures that I make good use of uh, any explanations so that I can revisit those topics and solidify that uh, knowledge. And all that planning, just to ensure that I don't lose my mind when I have to come home after eight to nine hours in the hospital to study for my shelf or end of rotation board exam. Not to mention the fact that I still need to work out, eat something, and sleep. Oh, and then there's also like you guys, this channel that I need to take care of. So things are going to change, but because of that, I planned a lot. One quick announcement, and this is for uh, the women out there who want to be a physician, uh, specifically anesthesiologist, but it applies to any girl who wants to be a doctor in the future. Uh, huge announcement. This is a podcast that um, I edited. It's hosted by two of the pediatric anesthesiologists that uh, were at our institution. And I'm happy to say that the project is wrapped. And by the time you're seeing this, the first episode will be released. It's called Alpha Women of Anesthesiology. I edited it, uh, Ruchet did all the audio engineering, uh, and it was actually a research project that I was able to do where it, a manuscript is uh, in press. And when that, when that is fully published, I'll be sure to let you guys know uh, in case you want to read it because it is addressing a lot of the gender disparities within medicine really nice read all based off of the podcast we made each episode contains notable leaders within anesthesiology um who have called in and when i mean leaders i'm not talking about just like anybody we got current and former chairs president of the national uh organization the uh society the uh, American Society of Anesthesiologists, uh, multiple program directors and chairs at, you, you, name, you name the big school, we got it. Um, it took forever to edit. Thank you, David over at Augusta Podcast for editing all my podcasts, because I don't know how, how you do it. But that's one way you can uh, keep in touch with me, uh, as well as my website which has been fully renovated, ndmdproductions.com, to now be the hub of all the stuff that I do, as well as it's a portfolio site in case uh, any of you guys want to work with me, any companies want to see it. Uh, it has a lot of the work I've done in the past. You can check out my photos, videos, uh, all my podcasts are hosted all in one place. And I have a very special announcement that we'll get to later in the video. This video is just all about announcements, it's fun. But yeah, uh, planning has been uh, the bulk of what I've been up to. And in all honesty, it's just been a journey to quell some of the anxieties that I have, because if I'm gonna be honest, I'm pretty anxious about starting. And it's not out of fear or anything, it's just like, you don't really know what to expect. And, you know, the type A personality that med school attracts, um, you know, often doesn't, doesn't want to believe that they're prepared. Um, and that's kind of a, a state I'm in where, you know, everybody else, um, all my mentors, advisors, my preceptors, um, will tell myself as well as everybody in my class that we're prepared for, uh, rotations, but I don't think there's a single person in my class that uh, can say they're like 100% ready. And with the new year, I think um, 
you have to talk New Year's resolutions as corny and as cheesy as that may sound. I think it's a good way to set goals and outlooks for the new year. And I said, you know, nobody really thinks they're ready or nobody wants to believe they're ready. But um, my resolution, and I think more of a prayer than anything uh, these past couple weeks has just been, Lord, make me ready. Um, make me prepared uh, to see patients and care for people uh, because this is what I came here to do. Uh, and I, I've been praying that every morning when I wake up and you know, that that is my New Year's resolution or New Year's goal. Uh, and to be completely honest, I only have one other New Year's resolution or goal for the year. Um, and it's something that I've struggled with a lot. But this year in particular, I'm making a very intentional effort to be mindful of it. Um, and actually, I got it. I got this resolution from one of my closest friends. Uh, hold on. Yo. Yo. <laughs> what's up, Tyler? Oh my God. What's up, man? How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Not too bad. How is studying for uh, Dedicated going? Oh, it's great. It's great. We're living our best life. It, it, it's great. You, you definitely look thrilled. Well, uh, you just finished up uh, your year of clinical rotations. And you also warned me a lot of <laughs> a lot of things to come. Helpful, I hope. <laughs> I was talking about earlier some of my New Year's resolutions, goals, uh, prayers, more <laughs> more like. Uh, and I had two. The first one being um, that just like I would be ready for you know whatever comes my my way throughout the year. Um, and the second one actually was inspired by you uh and your blog post oh. um do you do you remember what the last uh, recommendation in the list yeah. uh was uh, i think that one was be thankful um for where you are i think that's really hard for all of us to do especially when you get hit with third year and you have to do what you were doing in the first two but also now you have like actual work to do in the hospital um it's hard to remember that that person you were before you started med school thinking you were ever going to get in. I definitely needed to read that. That's something I'm going to hold very dear throughout the next year uh, where, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. Uh, there's going to be places where you're going, why in the world did I get myself in here? But just that little reminder of being grateful for uh, where you are at the moment um, and enjoy the journey. Yeah. As someone who finished uh, finished clerkship, what is uh, some advice for me as I start? Oh man, <clears throat> you're gonna kill it, man. I wouldn't worry at all. It's uh, there's gonna be some days where you feel like you know there's too much on your plate, but it's gonna be others where you're like, oh, I'm killing the game. You'll find your way along it. Um, I guess biggest advice is. Definitely take your education into your own hands for this year. Um, you know, these people we're working with, the physicians we're working with, they're fantastic. They really want to help you, but they also have, you know, their own job to do. And um, they're not necessarily working on a play-by-play -play book like we were in the first two years. So uh, sometimes you need to make sure you're going out of your way to be asking helpful questions, going above and beyond asking, hey, what can I do? Looking for learning opportunities. It's not always gonna be them saying, hey, you wanna learn how to do this? You wanna learn how to do this? Just ask. They they might say no, and they often do say no. But when they say yes, it's really cool. You've always given incredible advice um, to myself as well as I'm sure many of your peers. Uh, I believe you have a little announcement. Um, for what you've been up to as a incredibly talented writer, if you want to tell the people. I paid him to say that. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, this is great. I'm so excited to 
be able to say I'm working with Andy here again um, on some artistic and creative pursuits in medicine as a writer for NDMD Productions. Uh, he's given me the reins on his old blog there, and I'm excited to uh, just, you know, talk about life in med school, things that we go through on a day-to-day, uh, not just the actual school of it, but the, the life part of it, the, you know, friends, love, you know, stuff in your face with the Oreos after a bad day and everything in between. Oh, uh, but seriously, that guy has given me a ton of amazing advice and again, just an incredibly talented writer. So we've been planning, well, we, I've been looking for a blog writer for forever. And then I was like over break going, who else to give some amazing advice from the perspective of a medical student and also he's a medical student a year above me so he has an entire another year of wisdom uh than i and um we could talk about uh things that i don't know anything any anything think, you guys want to know about yeah like the, the thing that i like about it um it's funny because i was just i like to re- write creatively and with med school I, it almost kind of served as a uh I hate to use the word journal with everything going on, but uh, yeah. journal for stuff. Um, and I, I noticed some of the stuff I was writing, I was talking about a lot in conversation. And so just things kept coming up, not about like necessarily how to study for this or, you know, how do you prep for this, but like, how do you deal with, uh, you know, getting dumped after two dates when your friend gets married, but you're in med school, so you don't have time to think about it. Not that that was me specifically. Um, I just... <laughs> But like stuff like that, that, you know, whenever we think about physicians and the people in healthcare, we just think about their profession, but they've got the whole other side of life that they have to go through day to day too. So this is a nice way to just talk about what it's like from all angles. Absolutely. And um, I think that has been kind of the goal uh, to bring the authenticity and uh, genuineness to whatever we write about um, or whatever goes up on the NDMD socials. So having Tyler on board um, is just incredible. Um, we've shared that same goal of um, keeping it real since the beginning. And our first blog is up, well, I say ours, yours. What, what's it all about? Uh, so I was actually, um... I'm just getting back from a bachelor party. I was the best man, so I was hosting it. Um, and I was kind of thinking about, it's crazy that like one of my best friends is getting married. It's the end of a year. It's almost the end of med school. And I just feel like there's been a lot of massive changes that have happened in, in my life this past year. And so I, I kind of took that basic challenge of like, well, what's my resolution for this year? And I just had so many, I didn't know which one to pick from. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to talk about 22. I got 22 resolutions or things I want to change or improve on for 2022. Because uh, I don't know about y'all, but I think uh, I could use a break from the 2020s and the 2021s. I think I think 2022 is going to be our year, and I've got a good feeling about it. Um, but that starts early and by making some changes that you want to see in your future now. So that's what it's about. What can we do in med school to make you know, the, the best life it can be? For sure. And again, I I was reading it already impacted me. Um, if you have not read it yet, or if you want to check out the blog, the link will be in the description. Uh, there is a email listing opportunity. So if you want to stay up to date and receive emails from uh, that guy over there, uh, stay tuned, uh, join the email listing and Uh, There is a box also if there are topics that you specifically want us to write about from the perspective of a medical student, whether that be um, a whole post about the best resources to use. Um, It can be anything from relationship advice to uh, study tips, application stuff, um, even mental health resources if need be, because I know that's always something um, needed in these times. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, again, special shout out to Tyler. If you want to get some awesome advice from him, go follow the blog. And uh, just like that, it rounds out kind of my council of advisors here. 
But yeah, uh, if you wanna see more resolutions and goals that um, myself as well as a lot of other medical students have set uh, for the new year, go subscribe to the blog. Thank you for joining me on this new journey. Uh, be patient because uh, uploads will be here and there, but there's a lot of learning to be done this year and I'm super excited to um, grow as a student doctor, which um, I'm happy to be able to say. Take it easy, everybody, and uh, see you later. So when I first started to build out that portfolio website, I had zero idea what I was doing. And that is where the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, came into play. If you guys don't know about Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of curated courses from anything like art, graphic design, entrepreneurship, personal finance, and so much more. You think of the topic, they have a course for you. All these courses are personally tailored to your learning, meaning there are no ads to get in the way, and they give you the freedom to pace it on your own and learn whatever you want. When I was first looking to join Skillshare, I was thinking, look, there are so many awesome and creative people out there that have a better grasp on certain topics than I do. Just like I have my expertise in medicine and camera work, some people have their expertise in web design. And Skillshare brings those amazing teachers to my computer. The course that I personally use was called Webflow for Beginners because yeah, I'm a beginner by Jeremy Mira and it accomplished exactly what I wanted to get out of Skillshare where I learned a new skill and learned to apply it to my own personal life which was building the website that now hosts the blogs, podcasts, and all my media productions. The knowledge of proper web design has brought so much value into my life as a creator and has been such a useful asset in working with different companies as well as just showcasing the work that I do here on YouTube to potential residency programs or even friends. If you want to pick up or learn a skill that you've been wanting to for a while and you don't know where to start, luckily for you, I worked with Skillshare to get the first thousand people who click the link in the description a one month free trial of Skillshare meaning that you can get all their courses explore to your heart's desire all for free for a month using the link down below for the first thousand people that click it check out the beautiful new website ndmdproductions.com if you haven't go sign up for the blog wish me luck as rotations start and Thank you Skillshare for supporting this channel as always and sponsoring today's video.